before I tell you which, which verse, I'd like to ask that you try not to read ahead in your mind. <clears throat> because if you read ahead in your mind, you're going to automatically come up with what you've always believed the scripture to say. And so I want to give a little physics twist to this scripture. Romans 8 and verse 28. <clears throat> and we know that all things work together. Stop right there. A little physics twist. And we know that all things work together. All right. Now consider all of the things that we've looked at with physics. How amazingly, for example, the atom, how electrons and <clears throat> every, every part of it is flowing together to produce, as it were, a system or, <clears throat> and I don't mean a system in the sense of the world system or whatever, but a functioning reality of its own <clears throat> built on all the parts. And all the parts necessary to work together. This I tell you what we're already into. <clears throat> this is one of the huge failures in the church is because many kinds of different ministers in different areas are working to get their area to function, but they don't realize that the true function of it all is to work together. <clears throat> and one more scripture over in Ephesians chapter 1. to make sure that you understand we're not talking about physics but we're talking about the Lord Ephesians 1 and verse 10 <clears throat> that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things remember all things work together all things and we know all things work together in one so what is that telling us so far? It's telling us that there can be many, many, many parts. There can be many functions, diverse, different functions, different parts, and yet <clears throat> they don't work successfully unless they are founded on the one. Uh, uh, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, whether both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And so if you, if you took this on a physics level <clears throat> and you were finding the central core, the central focus of all things, you would say that it, it, is, it, it goes to astrophysics right down to the minutest quantum physics, whether in heaven or in earth, whether huge and vast or small, it's all gathered together in one, you know, one, one, all in one. And in that one, everything starts to truly function on a larger scale. And I want to <clears throat> I want to spend this class and maybe the next class, maybe more than that, but hopefully the next two classes, really exploring this reality because physicists are confused over, you know, they're, they're divided over certain areas because um, they're, you know, some things seem to work in the area that some are operating in, such as relativity, and some are working in quantum physics, but those two don't work together. <clears throat> they don't work together. Okay, well, that's just like Christianity. 
It's just like Christianity with um, uh, people specializing in certain fields of reality. And they're constantly trying to break down and then put back together their area so that they can understand it to the hilt. But what we're going to find out is you can never, ever fully understand it, and it is the reason for so much failure, is because they've made those individual areas something in and of themselves. And it has not come out from the center from the core issue, they've left the core issue out. <clears throat> and in doing that, frankly, if it's a ministry, it just becomes a business and you build it on business principles instead of Christ. And when I say Christ, I don't mean Christianity. And I don't mean the basic thoughts of what we think Christ-centeredness is. I mean the dynamo, the, <clears throat> the atomic force behind it all being the life of Christ. The thing that uh, attaches to the skeleton and gives it life, if you will. God breathing into a body. You could say a dead body, but it wasn't. It was just a body. It, the only thing that makes it dead is the absence of life. So before God breathed into it life, yes, it was a dead body. <clears throat> but instead of centering on being a dead body, it was a lifeless body. <clears throat> Is it possible for churches to be lifeless? Is it possible for Christians to be lifeless? Is it possible for denominations to be lifeless? <clears throat> and so my point <clears throat> is that People have centered on, let's say, I wrote it a certain way here, and I don't know if I've, I've actually got it here. Well, what I, I said many Christians are similar to physicists. They either specialize or connect things without finding the underlying principle that makes it all happen. In other words, you can find a connection with things without that connection being the connector of all things. And remember, we started with Romans. And we know that all things work together. And that's a powerful thought. I don't know. I know that, you know. But if you really meditate, I mean meditate on that, and we know that all things work together, <clears throat> then you realize it's not any good to have stuff that can even function successfully by themselves. Are you catching what I'm saying? If the bride of Christ cannot fully be what God wants unless it's functioning out of the one life, the one motive, the one reality, that the, <clears throat> that the ministries that we endeavor can never really satisfy God unless they're coming from that center core Thing that the father calls his son. And so um, <clears throat> to get to the core issue, which I believe to be Christ in death, burial, and resurrection, we can use an example of a, of a circle and a tree. So let me take this off of here. And <clears throat> we've alluded to this, I think, in our last course, last semester or whatever. <clears throat> but there's several ways of viewing this. You have a, a circle, and, and in that circle you can, well, let's just start with uh, um, your life. You know, I don't, I don't know what all the divisions are, but we can say <clears throat> uh, family. We, we can say uh, work, uh, recreation. We can say church. We can say friends. I don't know. There's a lot of things we could write down in these things. But in this circle, we divide it up like a pie. 
And this is sort of how we do our life. We have different segments that are only connected by this line that makes it a piece of the pie connected to this over here or this, but it could be totally unconnected to many other things. And is it possible <clears throat> that a person could go to church and have a feel and an understanding while they're at church that when they get home, that same thing is not there. It's like that's totally separate. Well, that's different. I've, heard, I've even heard people say stuff like, oh, that's different. This is home. Or this is recreation. Or this is <clears throat> work. And that's because <clears throat> we call the whole, we call the whole this big outer, we call the core, we call the the, the thing that's really the thing is this big circle out here, but that circle out there, the outside circle, is the circumference. The circumference. This is well understood. A circle has a circumference. But with every circumference, there's a center. And if you'll notice, and most people will not notice, <clears throat> they are all tied together by the center. What is the center? They are all tied together, but most people never see that center. When you draw the pie, you only see the parts. Welcome back, Jim. Congratulations. <laughs> and isn't it true that even in looking at that, maybe you didn't notice the center. Maybe you didn't even consider the center. Maybe Maybe it didn't stick out to you at all. Maybe it wasn't even a factor. Maybe for you it wasn't even there. All you saw <clears throat> was the circumference and the pie chart and the parts within that. And then here's what we do. We say, how do we get all these to function together? Can I get amen? And you know, it's like, how do I... The, the most common way people ask me is, how do I bring balance to my life? Okay, and what they mean is, is that all of this works together, becomes congruent, and there's a flow with it all. <clears throat> and, you know, I'm working too much and I'm not spending enough time with my family, or I'm, you know, <clears throat> too involved with the church or not involved enough, or whatever, whatever. It, does, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> because the issue is none of these things that are attached to the circumference, and that's where our notice is, that they're attached to the circumference. Every one of these things are tied right here to the center. And how many people look at something like that and go, I see it, I see the thing that joins them all together. I see the thing that is meant to be central. I may, even in looking at that, I may not understand what that center is, but from looking, I understand there is a center that holds it all together. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, well, is that center water baptism? is that, you know, we can go on and on and on through the, the different areas. <clears throat> but the center is, and, and we'll, you know, here's the simplistic answer. The center is Christ. Now, most people are satisfied just to say that and move on. But I'm sorry, you're dealing with me. And I'm, you know, the people that are struggling with these areas may have Christ in the center as their understanding of what in the center means. That means at mealtimes they pray, they go to church, they have a uh, time, Bible reading time, and that's putting Jesus in the center. No, no, that's you. You're still in the center of all those activities. You're doing them for him. You're the center. <clears throat> and so without trying to explain, without trying to bring us to conclusions of, of what that is, 
I would rather we first come to conclusions that there is a center that holds it all together. There is a center that must be discovered and our place, our, our heart's desire should be to discover that center as God understands it, not as I've taught it or anybody else has taught it. And every time somebody says, well, Jesus is the center, we jump and hoop and holler as if we've got the answer, but we don't. We've got the right name, unless, you know, you're Jewish, and then it's Yeshua or whatever, you know what I mean? <clears throat> or Mexican, then it's Jesus, you know? I mean, I remember witnessing in Mexico and saying, do you know, do you know Jesus? You know, I said, yeah, yeah. I said, praise God. He said, which one? <laughs> I said, well, you know, Jesus. And he said, well, yeah, we got three or four of them live right around us here. <laughs> <You know? clears throat> we, we have to have God to define this stuff on the inside, not define stuff to our brain so that we think we understand it because then we're still on the earth. This is fathomed in the heavens also. This is above the heavens. This is heaven and earth and everything else brought together, as we read, in one, in one, in one. <clears throat> and so um, you, can, you can divide this up not in relationship to your life, but in relationship to, well, let's, let's, let's do the, Let's do the denominational thing, okay? We got Baptists, Methodists, got Pentecostals. What else do we have? Pardon? Catholics is a good one. And Pres Lutherans, how about that? The point being <clears throat> that every one of these denominations, and we've only listed a few, think that they have the center. Am I right or wrong? They think they have the center. Okay? And, you know, if it was the Church of Christ, the center is no music in church, baptized in the name of Jesus, um, <clears throat> what else? You know. Pardon? <clears throat> there you have it. So, oh, come on. Is that really it? I mean, and yet those are the main denominational things, you know. The Baptists oppose the Methodists because the Methodists sprinkle, but the Baptists dunk. Okay? You know, I mean, if they were at Dunkin' Donuts, they'd get in an argument. You know what I mean? One would sip and the other one would dunk. We're, we're already divided. Uh, here's, here's the explanation. We're already divided. We're already divided. Something's wrong on the inside, and therefore we're divided. The issue is just something that comes up that becomes the issue to show the divisions. I hope you can see that <clears throat> because this says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, when God has finished this dispensation, not dispensational teaching, but this work of, that he's trying to perform, we will discover that all things are brought together in one gathered together, fullness of times he might gather together in one, in one, and that one is Jesus. That one is not your church, you know, <clears throat> and it's not their church, and it's not, it's his church, but his church is him, if you understand what I mean. It's his body. It's his body. And, uh, you know, I love the scripture that says, the, that uh, talks about the church, which is his body. Not the church that's in a building, not the church that prays and meets together every Sunday. The church that is his body, the church, the one that functions as the vehicle of the life of Jesus Christ. 
That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Now you're on the right track. Well, maybe it includes all of these, but it doesn't include any of them. This center point is not the center point of their lives, of their doctrine, of their... You understand what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying <clears throat> that you can't hold other teachings and other stuff. I'm not saying that at all. I'm talking about the center point. Okay? I'm talking about the core that holds it all together. And I'm talking about the fact that your life, when we had this, this pie chart up here, a picture of your life, that it doesn't hold all together by trying to be religious or, or trying to put God in everything. It holds together by Christ, period. Now, I know that's not much of an explanation because I just took away the thing that you thought was Christ in the center. But it is here, the very Christ and the very life of Christ filling and touching every part. And when it came to your life, he, he recreation should have Christ filling it. Amen. Family should have Christ filling it. It should be his life, never leaving that, never going, well, that was fun, but now I'm off to do this. And in a different spirit and in a different way. No, Jesus, if, Je you know, if Jesus is life, he is, and if Jesus is life, then life fills every category. Can I get amen? amen. Every category, yes. <clears throat> right. That's right. And so, and then finally, Utilize our pie chart one more time. <clears throat> well, maybe one more time. Probably several more. <clears throat> Instead of talking about denominations, <clears throat> let's talk about functionings of one church, not a divided church, if you will, from other denominations though it will be if it's divided in any way in this, in this sense. But <clears throat> we talk about um, uh, nursery workers. We talk about people responsible for prayer. We talk about evangelism. We talk about administrators. administrators. What else we got? Um, so, you know, I mean, there's, there's a million things. Sunday school, uh, um, preaching, worship. Worship's a good one. Okay. Let's hold with those right there. All right. And that's just a few again. That's just a, a small few. And yet, we think we're all functioning together because we're all doing our part. Okay. And have you ever been in a church where everybody did their part and they did it pretty much correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but were there underlying problems? In other words, were there jealousies even if they didn't come to the forefront of the congregation or this or that? Or were, were, there, were there differences? Was, was there an assistant to one of these who didn't think that the way they were doing it was the best way and of course, the way we would do it would be the best way. I mean, that's every man's way is right in his own eyes. <clears throat> you know, that's just a good principle to recognize. My way is always right in my own eyes. I need to be open to something other than my way. That's me talking to me. You understand what I mean? That's my spirit. That's, I'm saying, look, the Bible says... Every man's right in his own eyes. And they, they think that way too, and so do you, and da 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 da. What makes you think your way is right? Because every man's way is right in his own eyes. That's the only reason. Do you understand what I'm saying? That that's the only reason is because 
I look at anything that anybody else does, and I can do it better. You know, I can, you know, if you'll just let me have that. You know. And I anybody that's known me over years has seen me let go and let people have stuff. Yeah, and they've always, you know, gone, oh, my God, take it, take it. No, 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 you wanted it. No, I'm messing it up. It's a mess. <clears throat> I don't know better. But I believe Jesus does. And I believe that you come to a place where the center point is right here. The center of everything is Christ. And only, first of all, only his life, not how you do the ministry. Not how you administrate the ministry. Not how you form it or do it. Only the life of Christ filling every part is the common denominator, and it will fail. It will fail eventually. I don't care. It will fail eventually if it's not Christ's life. Now, before I call on Scott, let's just realize that Jesus was meant to fulfill every part. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. He was meant, he's the fulfillment of that, but we have taken that unto ourselves divided it and made got a name and a title out of that you know we don't just we're, we're not just the prayer leader we're the intercessory prayer captain you know it's like can't you just pray <laughs> you know and can't you do it in your closet you know <laughs> And or do you have to, I'm the intercessory prayer captain. Okay, I'm going to go to my closet and pray now, but I just wanted to check in and make sure that you all, yeah, Scott? Yeah, 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 the, you know, for, for me, and this is just me, but for me, anytime I've gone to a funeral, I don't care how good they've fixed them up, I can tell they're dead. <laughs> and that sometimes bleeds into other areas. No matter how well they think they're fixed up, I can tell it's dead, okay? And, and more importantly, what little discernment I have means nothing Jesus can always tell <laughs> why well, you know the father looks and he goes well I don't see my son in there well I'm doing everything just like him so where's my son well it's for him yeah but where is he yeah. well I don't know <laughs> <laughs> stop asking me that one I, I got an answer for everything but that one <clears throat> alright so um, we, you know, this is a small example of this, but we have had ministries going around here. We've had them going, and they appeared to be going very, very good. And after a while of my examination of it and seeing, even though, the, even though it was functioning good, listen to me, functioning good meaning what? Um, not causing problems, being successful in its area, uh, having a good plan, da 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 da, whatever. I shut it down. And a few of you have been around a while, might even be able to name a few of those ministries. I shut it down, and I did it for one reason. And and you know, call. I remember calling the people together who are responsible or or involved in it, and saying, "Well, we ain't gonna do this anymore." Why not? This is so successful. It's so, it. We're really you know, it just. It, it seems like so much Jesus to us. Well, it's not. Because it wasn't. And then I've started bringing up, well, what about this and that and that? Well, oh, okay, you know, motives. You know, if you bring up motives, see, because motives are the quantum physics of the whole thing. We're looking at the universe and going, look how it flows. And we're down here smashing atoms with one another, causing atomic reactions. You know, and there are people who don't just react; they have atomic reactions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, 
Let's go one more time on our little pie chart. Let's get as much out of this baby as we can get. Um, let's, let's pick Bible subjects like doctrines and stuff like that. Okay, for example, uh, holiness. Okay. Um, what else? End time theology. What else? Think of think of all of the things that. The, um, How about kingdom teaching? Uh, healing, uh, deliverance, ritual gifts. Okay. We could really go on this one, couldn't we? Be because this very thing of these subjects is partially what's dividing the church. But it's not really what's dividing it at all, is it? It is an inward lack of the core that holds it all together. And again, that, that center core is Christ and though he's there, he's not holding it together for us because we don't understand how the nature of Christ should, should be between a, a prayer warrior and a children's church worker. I, I want to make sure you all understood what I just said. They don't get along because they, they've got different issues. And they think... You know, the children's church worker said, well, I've got pride because, you know, these children are going to grow up and they're going to live for God. And the prayer warrior says, well, i got pride because, you know, I'm praying right now and I'm, you know, da-da-da-da and all this kind of stuff. And none of that is Christ. The core of it is not there, and therefore it's parts, it's pieces. Yes. a division because in the dispensation of fullness of time if you've reached the fullness of what time was about you come to the reality that he that God wants him to gather together all things the full spectrum in one even in Christ things in heaven and earth astrophysics or on the earth quantum physics from the biggest to the smallest all gathered together and held together by the nature and life of Christ and there's nothing else that can hold us together. Everything else will divide us but the life of Christ will lay down his life for the whole. Yes? I put, uh, of course, our pet subject will be seen as bigger and more important uh, piece than the others in this pie chart. You know, whichever one is ours will have a bigger piece of pie. You know, well, yours is important, but, you know, okay, mine is.
is it. And is any of it greater than Christ? I mean, come on. Is anything, is any of Christianity greater than Christ? And the answer is no, it couldn't possibly be. It's supposed to flow out of him. We'll, we'll get into that specifically as we, as we go here. Um, I said, few pursue deeper past the area of their own interests. And that's the thing, because you see, when it comes to these doctrines, or the last pie chart we had was functioning ministries in the church, people actually are called to some of those things. Do you understand? I mean, to be a children's church worker or to pray, or to, they, they can actually be called to that. But they make the specific calling everything instead of what is everything to all of us, regardless of our calling, is to be conformed to the image of Christ so that when we do come together, we flow together. Issues come when it's not Christ, yes. That's a, that's a good example because the reality is, is that, you know, there is no commonality of function. And we'll, we're going to get into the scriptures. We'll get into the scriptures that talk about that. <clears throat> this, this go, or not maybe this class, but, you know, tonight. Um, but the body is a perfect example. And God made the body God made the body. And God made everything, for we know that all things work together. For we know that. All right, let's use another example here. Let's use an example of uh, an apple tree. And put some apples on here. Let's see. I wrote the observable, the heavens and the earth, is trying to declare something to us. Okay, the heavens are, the earth is, the apple tree is. Take the example of an apple tree. In your search, you may start with a, with a manifestation, the apple. The apple. It's just a manifestation. You may taste it dissect it, study its molecular structure or quantify its particular smell as opposed to other kinds of fruit. And I, I hope you'll notice that I'm giving different ways of approach to the apple in an effort to know the apple. You following me? In an effort to know the apple, the, all these things can be done. And this is the common way that man goes about to discover. <clears throat> um, no matter how much you study that particular object, you cannot discover its origins in, that, in this way. Am I right or wrong? Look in, you can look at an apple all day long, and if you knew nothing of seeds or roots or anything else, look at just look at it. Cut it up. You know, study its, uh, the, the structure of it. Do all of this stuff. And nothing in that will tell you where it came from. Isn't that interesting? And yet, what is it? The apple is nothing more than a manifestation. A manifestation of what? The core reality. Oh, it's got to go through a big, long process to get to the core reality. It's not going to come easy. You're going to have to study it out. But when you find the center, when you find the, the mother of all realities, then you understand where it really came from. 
Now we're talking about physics, astrophysics. They're trying to study all out in there. They're trying to study manifestations to find the origin of everything. You can divide it, you can smell it, you can dissect it, you can look at it, you can study its chemicals, you can do everything else, but you can never, just like that apple, know its origin from the manifestation. Unless, there's only one way that that can actually lead you to it, and I'll get into that here in just a, just a second. Um, instead, <clears throat> instead of being looked upon as an object in and of itself, an apple must be approached more as a manifestation of something else, something greater. That's where we make the mistake, right there. We look at healing, and we don't see it as a manifestation. We see it as something in and of itself. And so we start our own ministry of healing and we make that the center when healing is nothing more than a manifestation of something else. And many things are nothing more than manifestations. And in a certain sense, in a certain sense, you could say that it's all just a manifestation on a different level until it brings forth the ultimate fruit all comes back to whatever the center, the core, the, the root basis of the thing, uh, the seed basis of it, however you want to uh, label it. <clears throat> and, and so we make that manifestation something in and of itself. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that, it, that we make it work and stand alone when it was never meant to stand alone. For we know that all things work together. <laughs> it was never meant to stand alone. And yet all the things in our circles and, and all of the pie charts, whether it be our life or the church functioning or doctrines, we've made them all things in and of themselves as if they could stand alone and they cannot stand alone. They cannot. They cannot. And they will not. And they will not. And I will tell you this, if you mess with God, and here's what I mean, if you, if you pick some manifestation and say that that's it, that's the great thing, God will prove you wrong eventually. He's long-suffering, but he will deal with you. If you say healing is it, you will eventually be in a horrible wheelchair or something like that. You will be brought down until you go, you know what, there's got to be something more than this. Now, that's not God being mean. That's God wanting you with him and trying to do his best to drive you ever forward through the process from apple to I said, I probably wrote all that here. Um, oh, here it is. However, the logical progression to be followed would not take you immediately to the root or even the initial seed and its principle. It would take you to the leaves and from there to the branch and then to the trunk, um, etc. If any of the, let's see, along the way you may discover bark, or sap, or growth circles, or insect infestation, or bird's nests. If any of these things become an object in themselves, then we will assume we have arrived and growth will cease. Knowing things on a root level will remain a mystery. We will miss the heart of the matter. So, manifestation can lead you to the truth, but not in the way that we're examining it, not in taking it as a thing in itself. Not if we do not study it as a manifestation of something, then we will study it as a thing all by itself. Like an apple. And again, you can peel the skin off, you can look at the, you can go, you know, you can taste it, you can do all this stuff, but it does not lead you to the roots except as you follow it to that little stem and maybe the leaves that are around it and then it leads you to a little limb and then a bigger limb and then a branch and then all the way down to the trunk until one day you arrive at the root cause and where it all sprang from in the first place. Okay, all of that 
That's great. All that's, we're not talking about some field of, of science here. We're talking about developing a heart that is not so quick to grab anything that comes along and anoint it as king. We are saying we're dumb. We need to go through a long process of working our way back till we find the core, not the first thing we run into. This is it. <laughs> you know? And build a ministry around it and want everybody to come to the first church of the apple. Well, I'm sorry. That started with Eve. Yeah. Just kidding. We don't know it was an apple and never said it was an apple, but nonetheless. <clears throat> the first church of the apple started there. <laughs> and so, you know, we're all, you know, we're all trying to figure it out, but we think we figured it out when we've taken that apple, studied its molecular structure, began to see how certain even quantum particles formed it, and began to study the things that give taste and all this, and then we know it better than anybody, and we look at everybody else as fools, and I will teach you about the apple. Well, you can teach about the manifestation all day long, but I want to know what manifested it. And I want to tell you what manifested it is very different than what was manifested. Now listen to that because we assume that the manifestation is a big, big picture of what that is. And yet, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, anybody ever studied that out? You know, you study that chapter out, you'll begin to discover that the body that he first gave it was not, you know, a tree or this or that, but first a seed that died. Then the resurrection form began to be another body completely different. And this is this is Paul's teaching, clear and straight. This isn't even secretive, you know, but but he's not trying to teach science either. He's teaching Christ. And so um, let's see, let me let me read one more here since I'm getting signs already. But none of these manifestations are independent in themselves and none of their functions stand alone. Okay. Now this is this is important. Well, a, a, an apple functions in bringing me joy. I enjoy eating an apple. Well, a branch functions in me ha having several of them broke off and use them in my fireplace and they keep me warm. Well, uh, you know, leaves, uh, when they fall from the tree, they make me happy and I make compost and from that I'm able to grow other things. We get we're we're getting we get totally into the thing as if it all by itself is something. All by itself, and all by itself, it does have function, but it's not the function. They all can function in very different areas, and you have to see. It just flashed to me. Uh, uh, fun, uh, seeing all these different functions and thinking, well, in quantum physics, for example, many years ago, way years ago, there was a movie called The Invisible Man. That's very old. I think if I remember correctly, it was in black and white. Anybody remember The Invisible Man? Wow, more than I thought. The Invisible Man. <clears throat> oh, wait, I'm sorry. It wasn't The Invisible Man. It was The Incredible Shrinking Man. That's what it was. And it wasn't Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It was The Incredible Shrinking Man. And something happened to this guy, and he starts shrinking and shrinking. And so he gets down on a small level where he's down there the size of mice and cats and stuff, and he's, he's attacked by the cat and the mice and all this stuff's going on, and he's freaking out, and it's like... His whole world is different. The order is different. Do you understand what I'm saying? The, the laws are different down there. It's a whole different thing. You've got to adjust to the world that you're in. And yet, that is the world, but there's a bigger world. But there are different levels of that. And, and it, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't go there. But imagine 
if that guy had kept shrinking, now it stopped at that smaller level at the cats and all that, but imagine if he had kept shrinking, shrinking down until, you know, he, he ends up uh, uh, befriending a one-celled, you know, amoeba. You know, because that, he's in a different world now. And, and he keeps shrinking, so he starts falling through particles and molecules and stuff. I mean, he's slipping between them now, you know. And the physics of that world is completely different than the physics of this world on, on a living basis. Do you understand what I'm saying? Especially trying to bring our reality into that one. That's where most of the problem of this whole thing is. We're trying to bring our reality into God's and let him, and we don't understand why it doesn't all work. Well, because he's not trying to get into our little world. He's trying to bring us into his, into his reality. And so, you know, you just keep, you just keep shrinking down until, I mean, subatomic particles or so. I mean, you know, like I said, a, a, an atom is huge compared to subatomic particles. And so each one of those, there's different ways of functioning within them. But none of those are it in itself. They're not it. And so you have to keep exploring and discovering beyond that and seeing that there's more reality. And that's all we're saying is to, dis to have a heart that says, you know what? And I don't mean this in a negative way. I mean this in a positive way. We're all idiots. We don't know anything yet as we are. Wait a minute. That's a scripture. Came right out of my mouth. Do you hear that? We know nothing yet as we are. Can you believe the word of God actually popped out of me like that? That is the word of God. And we don't know anything yet as we ought. And that's not a negative thing. That's a good, wholesome Wonderful thing, Lord, what I may know may be simply a manifestation, but it can be followed. It is not something in and of itself. That's the key right there. It can be followed to lead me to the root. It can be. And I don't want to d explore the, the cat-mouse world and get it down, realizing that there are other worlds both direction, quantum and astro. So what are we saying? We're saying that if our heart is not prepared for that, we will barely go below the surface and think we've arrived. And we have not arrived. I have not yet arrived. I don't, you know, I can't even imagine stopping throughout all the eternal ages to come, learning the, these things as treasures of Christ. <clears throat> How much time we got left? Five minutes. Well, let's see. All right, I'll just try to read this. But none of these manifestations are independent in themselves, and none of their functions stand alone. None of their functions are the prime function. Um, using the example of the body, and Mallory's saying, well, the function of a, what was it, a kidney or something is different. Toe and a pancreas are very, very different. <clears throat> and yet, every function is necessary to the whole because all things work together for good to them who, you know. But <laughs> um, You can study each function, but not yet understand the underlying force. Individually, they each have their own questions and answers. Am I right or wrong? Individually, every level, every area, every organ, or whatever you want to look at, they have their own questions and answers. But the answer for every area, for every organ, for every level, is Christ is life. We are hungering to know the mother of all theories, Christ. All right, we'll just stop right there and we'll... Come back after this.